Have you ever said or thought, I'm just gonna quit real estate. I don't even know if this is right for me anymore. If you have, you're not alone and we're gonna address it today so you don't feel burnout any longer. If you're here because you're in real estate and you wanna grow your business, leverage the best strategies possible, make the most amount of money, but still have time with for the people you love, make sure you hit the subscribe button and we'll get started. Today, we're gonna to talk about the biggest culprits that make you feel burned out, how that happens and how to fix it. And hang with me till the end because it's gonna pull it all together and show you how to do real estate where you're not burning out in less time than you're probably doing it right now with better results. Not only have I felt like I wanted to quit real estate, I've helped coach many agents across the country through this process where they have more control over their own business. One of the biggest and most concrete things we can fix right away is the lack of boundaries. If you're working 24 seven, that is a big problem. Your value isn't in your accessibility. Your value is in what you know and the results that you can give. And a lot of agents go into this business going, I'm just gonna work whatever I can get and whenever I can because I gotta take what I can get. And then you get into year five, year six, year 10, year 25, and you're going, wait a minute, I didn't update my boundaries or we didn't start with boundaries that were clear and now I'm burned out. They're gonna look different for everyone. So you don't have to listen to someone who has like the voicemail that says, I only work nine to five and return messages the next day. That does not have to look like your boundaries. Your boundaries can be, I don't answer the phone after eight. It could be, I'm only working one week at a month. It could be whatever you want it to be. And before you backpedal and say, no, no, I could never do that. Like that would never work in my business. I can guarantee you that I've had agents say that and then they do it. It's hard to let go and not be available all the time because being available all the time and you pick up, that's you trying to prove your value and you don't have to prove it. You've already done it. You've gotten the listing agreement or the buyer's agreement. They know you're good for it. You don't have to prove it any longer. So let's just start with some simple boundaries that make sense for you about how long you're gonna work, maybe what time your phone goes off. A really simple boundary could be something like, I eat dinner with my family every night and I don't touch my phone. When I'm with my children or at their events, I'm not touching my phone. You can still be available until nine o'clock if you wanna be, but at least that's a boundary that's helping you not feel so crazy. Standards is the other side of that. And I'm telling you, the easiest way to make more money and work less is to raise your standards because the people who wanna work with you will rise to it. It's also a really good way to raise your price point without even trying real hard. Your standards are your standards. They don't have to be the same as mine, but they can look like you have a full pre-approval as a buyer before we go out to look at listings. We have a buyer's agreement before we go out to look at listings. Your motivation has to be an eight out of 10 or above or you're just in the pipeline. We're not moving forward if you have a lack of motivation. The standard could be the property has to be in XYZ condition before listing it. Your standard could be a level of which you want to be treated. If someone is talking to you in a way you don't appreciate, you don't have to work with them. All it does when you uh, repel people to not work with you is to make room for people who are the perfect fit for you. And I'm telling you that it eventually just ends up working out to where your price point increases and you make more money. Because those clients are easier. They take less time. You're able to communicate with them better than struggling and pulling someone along the entire time. If you're noticing my hands are crazy colors, I did a project with my daughter earlier. If you're fearful of putting a standard in, that's a scarcity mindset that's creeping in there somewhere. You will get more clients. This happens to everyone. They feel like, oh man, if I repel someone, what if I need that client later? You will get better clients. If your focus is on attracting that better client, instead of wasting time with someone who doesn't match your standards and you just like are on this chase that you waste all your time, you could be making videos, you could be making content, you could be reaching out to your clients. You could be sending note cards to your current clients, clients in Sphere that result in a better client experience for a future client. It truly doesn't have to be more complicated than that. Most of the agents I talk to who are feeling burnt out or any kind of overwhelm, it is because they are typically doing too much and often too much of what they don't like. Let's look at what you're actually doing and hold it all accountable. So what activities do you do that are getting your results? Then what activities that are getting results that you actually enjoy? The rest of the stuff that you don't enjoy that may be getting you results but you hate or that you're doing because someone else told you to do them, but you're not seeing the results yet, and you're just doing it because you're like, oh, well, I thought it was the right thing to do. You don't have to do that. Give yourself permission to do activities that you actually enjoy 
to get business because I 100% know it's possible. There is a lead source that will fit you. There's one that fits everyone. There's endless amount and they all work. So we just have to figure out what fits you best. The easiest way to do this is to take everything that you've already been doing, what's on your plan and everyone's told you to do, and just throw it away and start from scratch. If you're doing stuff you don't like, it's really just a waste of time and it's not really all that effective in the long run. So start with your blank piece of paper, write down ideally what it would look like. Ideally, what would your standards boundaries be? What would your plans and ideas be for lead generation? What would you like it to look like? Keep it in mind, we're looking for the biggest bang for our buck, the biggest bang for our energy. So we're looking to leverage as much as possible. A little secret is when you start doing things that you don't like and they don't provide results and you become burnout, you start to isolate. A lot of you just start to isolate, just be by themselves. And then the, then the, the imagination just starts kicking how they're not a good agent, how they should just quit, how, which, why am I even doing this, right? When you actually enjoy it, that's not gonna be the result of what you, your activities. Two huge components of this leverage is your social media and lead generation and also your branding. So I'm gonna link both of those videos below here and you can look at them when you're done this video. Now let's talk about the time management and how to make all of these things happen as quickly as possible with the least amount of energy possible, but still huge results. If I haven't introduced you to the 80-20 rule before, here it is. 80% of your activities and your effort gets you 20% of your results. 20% of your activity and energy gets you 80% of your results. So let's go through and identify what you're doing right now that gets you the majority of your results. Scrutinize this stuff. If you're not getting results, then it shouldn't be on your calendar. Let's not wait it out any longer. If it is getting you results, are you spending the quality time there or are you doing it on the roller coaster saying, I'm gonna do a little bit and then I'll get busy and then stop. When you identify these things with real estate, and I'm gonna give you a hint about what mine are and maybe yours are similar. Once you identify the 20%, that is your, your list of things that you need to do every day to keep your business going. It's typically three to four activities max. Those are the drivers of your business. Everything else has to get done, may need to get done by somebody, but maybe it doesn't need to get done by you, or maybe it doesn't belong on your schedule at all. Those three to four things are your business things. They typically take agents a couple of hours to do. That is your driver. They're to be done consistently every day. And when you do them, you drop off of the roller coaster. Agents are almost freaked out when we go through and go, okay, how long do you think these activities that you've identified would take? For me, it's to send one card, personal note to someone every day, to create one piece of content, whether it's a post or a video or something to get people engaged, to have one meaningful conversation with someone in my sphere or someone new that I meet. Doing those simple things allow me to leverage so much time. Like if I just create one video, and it doesn't even have to be YouTube, if you create one video on TikTok or on Facebook to get in front of your social media, that is so much leverage for you because people are watching that while you're doing something else. People are looking at your posts and commenting while you're doing something else. I also have a communication plan for the year, which outlines month to month my 20% of what I do for the year. So I have two client events a year. Each month, it's one to two things. It is not big. And those things that I mentioned to you about the daily, that is on my communication plan for ongoing that I do every day. I've shared all this. If you guys want to see the my exact communication plan, I'll link it below. You can do exactly what I do if I, you want. Where the real magic happens with this strategy is that your 20% isn't just for, oh, how do I get business? What's my lead gen? What do I need to do for my business? It's what's your 20% for you? Like what? Is, do you need to do for you the 20%? Not all the things that are always on your list, but if it's like, okay, I've identified, like if I work out every day, that's my thing. Or if I go on a walk three times a week, that's my 20%. What is it, is it that makes you feel good? Because that is part of your 20% in this plan and will help you avoid the burnout. It does not have to be working it out. It could be every week I need three days off. I want to take an extra day off. Okay, well, take your three days off because I'm telling you, you're going to be a way more amazing realtor by having time and being able to think through strategies with negotiation and contract writing than you would if you were exhausted working 24-7. I would much rather you see take an extra day off than work every day of the week. Remember, this isn't just me. This is agents that I've coached over and over again. I've seen them 
they take more time off, they're a better agent, they make more money. You've got your business covered, you've got you covered. Well, how about your family and friends or anything else that you're interested in? What's the 20% there? So for me, I have three kids. This is the only way I'm able to do all the things that I do is by following this 80-20 rule. So for my kids, what's the 20% with them? Sometimes I'm wrong, so I have to ask them. Sometimes I think going to the playground or swimming at the pool for three hours is their 20% when really it's they just wanted me to sit with them while they played Minecraft or they want me to go to the trampoline park with them one day this week. If we can take the time to identify that, it makes it so much easier, not just for your headspace, but for like all that mental load and the actual physical time that you spend. Like we don't need to worry about all this. Let's just identify it. Let's just ask. Like if you have a spouse or a significant other or a best friend that you want to cultivate that relationship with, what's most important to you? Because I want to make sure that happens. Because in my mind, I'm gonna think that 15 things are important to you and I'm gonna try to make them all happen because we're overachievers here and that's just what we do. Why do we need to do that when really just the one thing's most important to them or two things? Once you have everyone's 20%, those things that are the most important in your life with your work, for you, for your children, or whoever's important to you in your life, spouse, whatever else is important, then there are gonna be plenty of spaces to put that together. You're going to have enough time because now you're not doing stuff you hate. You're doing lead generation that's effective and you're leveraging every bit of resource and time that you have. If you want to learn more valuable strategies on how to grow your business while still having a freaking amazing life, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next week. Thumbs up would be amazing too.